are going to speak about the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. I want us to go to Genesis verse 1. I mean chapter 1 verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Amen. We are talking about the Spirit of God. This is where it all began. Okay. The Lord says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2, The earth was formed and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of waters. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Amen. This tells us that the Holy Spirit in the formation of the earth, he was there with God. Amen. Amen. He was there with God. Amen. Now I want us to go to um, Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 19. The book of Acts, chapter 19. It happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking with other tongues and prophesying. Amen. Amen. The next one that we're going to read is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 11 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 11 to 14. Okay, he says, For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. Amen. These are the three chapters, the three uh, um, books that we were, I wanted to just um, reference. Amen. So it's in Genesis, it's in Acts, Acts, and it's also in Corinthians. There's some more that I'm going to, to speak of as we go through the word. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, we need you in this place. We need you, Lord. We need the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you for this word that we are going to receive today. It is a gift unto us, and we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit, the first thing that I want to say is that the Holy Spirit is not 
a thing. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a being. He's a spirit. He's a being. The same as God. God is not a thing. He's a being. He's a spirit. Amen. So as Jesus, Jesus was a being. He was spirit. He was uh, flesh, and he was also soul. Amen. So every single one of us are beings we have the spirit that spirit in us is a being this is why the spirit is able to talk to us this is why the spirit is all, all it is it can it can feel things you know this is why the spirit it behaves like us because it's a being amen it's not just a amen so when we refer to the holy spirit we never refer to the holy spirit as an it Amen. The Holy Spirit is a He because Him and God and Jesus are one. God is a He. Jesus is a He. And the Holy Spirit is a He. And not only that, because the Bible, Jesus Himself, tells us that He is a He. Amen. In the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Those are the first things that I wanted to talk about. Number two. When we enter into understanding who God is, when we start learning about God, right? There's the two types of baptisms. There's the baptism that was done by John, which is the baptism where you are being immersed in water, okay, and then you come out, and then that is a baptism to say that you have declared you have died to self, and now you are born again. Amen. But that is being born again in the flesh. Amen. All the sins are taken away. It was a representation of being born again. Amen. Because once you are immersed in the water, you die under the as you come up, you come up a new man. You come up washed, washed and clean. Amen. Amen. Now, Paul here says to um to to uh in Apollos, was in Apollos in in in, in, in Corinth, né? Um, so he was in Corinth and he was talking to Apollos, right? And uh, he says, oh yeah, he was going past Corinth and then going into Ephesus. And then he says to them, to the to some of the disciples, né? Arcobana, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? I'm assuming that all of us here believe that Jesus is Lord, right? Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, because we have declared that. Am I correct? Yes? Amen. So, if we believe that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, that he died on the cross, and he rose up after three days, and now he is in heaven with the Father sitting at the right hand of the Father, if we believe that, the, the Bible says that if you believe that, then you can come to heaven. Amen. But no one can bring you to, the, to, to Jesus outside of the Holy Spirit. The person that reveals to you what that is, is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has been given to all of us. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that begins to speak to you. Bless you, Lord. He begins to speak to you and Jesus. He begins to speak to you and he begins to, to, to give you the revelations. Amen. This is why it's saying in the Bible that, um, the, you know, the people, the natural man, will not be able to accept the things of the Spirit, will not be able to understand what we are saying when we are saying Jesus is Lord, or when we are saying Jesus is the Son of God, or when we are saying that Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father are one, they will not be able to understand that. They think that we are fools. The reason why they don't understand is because the Holy Spirit has not spoken unto them regarding this. Or the only person that can reveal Jesus to us is the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Jesus died, before he died, he said to the, to the apostles, he said to them, you must remain, you must remain, no, after he rose up, he said to them, you must remain in Jerusalem, okay, until, until the power on high comes to you, amen. You can't do anything outside of that. 
the disciples themselves, even though they walked with Jesus, even though they learned things from Jesus, even though they saw the miracles, signs and wonders, such as so, all of that, but they still needed the Holy Spirit to explain the things, the secrets of heaven, the secrets of the kingdom of God, the secrets of why Jesus died for us. That way they are able to go out and begin to minister to everybody. Amen. Because now the gospel is different for them. The first, the first gospel that they know is that Jesus is here. Jesus has arrived. The Son of God is here. This is why there's a there's a there's a, somewhere in the Bible where they were saying uh, Jesus was riding on a donkey. Uh, this is before his crucifixion. He was riding on the donkey, entering into Jerusalem, and people were putting pounds on the floor because they was and they were saying Messiah, Messiah to him. You understand? People recognized at that time that he is the Messiah because of the miracle signs and wonders that he used to do, the type of teachings that he, he began to teach. Jesus only taught about the kingdom of God. He, every single time when he spoke, he spoke of the kingdom of God. Therefore, whatever that we are going to do from here going forward is to speak of the kingdom of God. Because now, we, when we go out and we say, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is Jesus. He is the king. When the king is there, then there is a kingdom. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the king. And when the king is there, therefore there is a kingdom. You see what I mean? So when the kingdom of God came onto the earth, it began to change things. Because now what is God trying to do? God is now beginning to change all of us to be proper subjects the high in heaven. We must be the same as when what he had intended us to be. Amen. Not with sin. If you are going to be in a kingdom, there's rules and regulations in that kingdom. If you go to England, there's, you can't just go and speak to the queen anytime you want. Amen. There's, there's people that you have to go through. Before you go to the queen, there's a way that you have to dress. You can't just walk in and like, hey, yo, queen, there's a way that you address him, you address her, you know what I mean? There's things that needs to happen before you even enter that gate, because there's people there that are guarding that very same palace, amen? So, the Lord has given us examples in, on, this, on this earth to say, this is how my kingdom works, but the kingdom of God is way better than that, Amen. So God is saying, before you even come to me, you need certain things. You need things to learn before you even come to my house, come to my kingdom. So I'm going to bring some of these things here. I'm going to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Amen. So that you are able to hear, to, you are able to learn, and you are able to know the things, what my heart wants for you. Amen. By the time you die and you go to heaven, You've already practiced everything that you need to practice here. So when you get to heaven, it's not going to be like, oh, weird, like, oh, no, well, I didn't know I'm supposed to worship God. You know, oh, no, I didn't know I'm supposed to sway. <laughs> you know, I didn't know I'm not supposed to fornicate and all of those things. Because God will never allow you in there without you having to understand who he is. You cannot go, you cannot want something you don't know. Amen. The only way you can know, you can want it, is if you know what it is. Amen? Am I correct? Amen? Amen. So, before we even go before God, before we even understand the, you know, the, the, the revelation of who Jesus is, we need the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus died, he said to us, he said to the disciples, I have to go so that, that the one who is in me, can come here and tell you and remind you of all the things that I have said to you. Amen. Amen. And this Holy Spirit, the very same Holy Spirit, is going to be on everybody. Amen. The only way, the only way we can receive of the Holy Spirit is for us to want Him. God says you must ask and you shall receive. God says you must knock the door shall be open for you. God is not talking about workspaces and, and all of these things. God is talking to us about the Holy Spirit. And he says, 
if a child asked a father for bread, would, would the father give him a stone? No, he wouldn't. If a, if a child asked a father for anything else, would the father give them something different? You know, something that will help them. No, he wouldn't. Amen. 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 So the father says, if you knock, and if you if you knock and if you ask me, then I will give you what you're asking me for. And that is the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about food. He's not talking about a place to the shelter. He's not talking about any of that. You need the Holy Spirit in your life so that you know how to walk and navigate this life that you are in here. We need him. Amen. Amen. Without him, you are dead. Amen. The Spirit of God, it is what is, it is, it is the life that God has given you. Amen. That is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the one that understands that it's the heart of God. Not just understand, the Spirit of God is the heart of God. Amen. So can you see that without the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to even understand a single word that Jesus says to us. Amen. You can't. You will never be able to understand anything that we speak of when it comes to the to the kingdom of God. This is why the world is like is the way it is. This is why the world, Bavana, it's so easy for them to just swear at Christianity or swear at God or swear at Jesus or use the name of the Lord in vain. It's because they don't understand. They have not received the Holy Spirit. This is why then there is confusion. Amen. It is important for us to understand that we have to ask for the Holy Spirit. Even me as a servant of God, or anyone, anyone that is that is out there that is saying, I love God and I, have, I am a born again Christian. You need the Holy Spirit in order for you to understand even the teachings of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you know that sometimes I would read the Bible and I would struggle to understand it? As, as, as a servant of God, struggle to understand the Bible. And then I would stop and I say, yo, I did not pray. I did not ask for the Holy Spirit. And then I would pray and say, Lord, please, I need you here. I need you to teach me what your heart is saying. You know, I need to understand what is in your heart. And the Holy Spirit comes. By the time I start reading, things open in the spirit. And I'm like, wow, wow. You saw me last night when I was busy reading. And I kept to say, wow, wow. You know, because I was looking at this, the very same word that we've been reading all the time. But this time, God has opened my eyes and I'm like, wow. You know, you begin to understand the heart of God. Amen. And that's how much God loves us. He loves us that much that he gave us his heart. He gave us his heart. Huh? He gave us his power. The power, not just the, the dunamis power, the fiery power of God. Hmm? He's given us the power, the, 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 uh, um, the authority. His authority is giving it to us. We didn't work for it. He says, all you need to do is call upon the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You call upon the Holy Spirit, then that power falls on you. Amen. Amen. You know, what? let me explain something. The way spirits work. Spirits, they cannot operate outside of the body. They can't. This is why people... You'll see people running, okay, they are delivering people and what not, and then you see people doing more funny things. Spirits, these are like devils that are out there. They enter into the body and they start making you do wrong things. Amen. Amen. When the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, he will enter into you. You see? And you'll begin to hear him from the inside of you. Amen. Amen. You, it is like now you've got two beings 
two spirits inside of you are communicating with each other like this. But for the Holy Spirit to enter into you, you have to be clean. Amen. If you are not clean, he can't enter into you. Do you understand? Amen. If you are not clean, he will not be able to enter. Even the angels themselves, they step back. Because this is not clean. Amen. Amen. Before you even do anything, you repent. You say, Lord, forgive me for everything that I have done. If you can, you know I've sat one day on the floor crying and asking for forgiveness, trying to remember everything that I've done wrong. Do you know how embarrassing that is to tell God everything that you've done wrong? I tried. Three hours I was sitting there. I thought I was well, not that bad, you know. Three hours talking. Yeah, I'm so sorry for this. Yo, yeah, and then something else comes up. Like, yo, even this one. And something else comes up. I'm like, yo, yo, yo. I'm like, oh, you see this one? I'm really, really sorry. You know? All of them. All of these things. But God had to remind me of these things. So that when I say I'm sorry, I don't ever do them again. And to feel the way I was feeling, I felt so bad. And I bless God that I felt that bad at that moment because I know I will never want to feel like that ever again. Amen. And then once I was done with everything, I felt the peace of God coming upon me. And I knew that I had forgiven. Amen. That's when I knew that now I'm born again. Amen. Because now everything within me was renewed. Amen. Amen. That's when you start pursuing God. He's saying, Lord, I've cleaned this house. Now I need you to fill me in. Fill me with the right things. Fill me with the right thoughts. Amen. Amen. Not that thoughts don't come. Bad thoughts don't come to us. They do. Bad thoughts come to me. When it comes to me, the first thing I say, I just want Jesus. Hmm? You have to chase it away. It must be a conscious thing. You don't sit there and let it unveil and unveil and become a big thing and this is how people sin it's because now the thought comes and it comes like just a little bit you know and then as soon as it comes just a little bit and then you just continue and then let me see where this is going huh? this is taking you to hell you see but the holy spirit immediately you will feel it that this is not supposed to be here this is this is a foreign thing for me therefore you rebuke it immediately it must go away immediately, you know, by the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that we need to understand, bless you, Lord. Another thing that we need to understand about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit cannot speak of his own. He can't. He speaks, he speaks what God, what God is saying. Even Jesus himself. He said, no, I only say what I hear my father say. Amen. So everything that the Holy Spirit is telling you can never be contrary to what God says. If it is contrary to what God says, if you think you are hearing it, it, you know, it's, it's something in your head and it's saying to you, go and kill, that is contrary to what God is saying. You must know that is not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We need to be able to identify who the Holy Spirit is and how he speaks to us, how we feel when, he's, when, we, when we are in his presence, you know. Other people say different things. Other people will say, I feel a peace. Some people will say, I feel like, you know, goosebumps. Some people will say, I feel overwhelmed. Some people, they say different things because he comes to us in different ways. Amen. Amen. Even when he speaks, Sometimes he will speak and you will feel that, no, this is like, this, this, this is power, you know, where you can't even fathom it yourself and you don't know what to do with yourself because the Holy Spirit is speaking. Amen. And sometimes you will feel incredible peace, incredible peace that you want to just cry, you know. The crying is not to say, Lord, this is painful, but the crying is to say, wow, Lord, you love me this much. Amen. Amen. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit. We must recognize 
his voice. We must recognize his characteristics. The Holy Spirit speaks like God. Amen. Why? Because he is God. Amen. He is the heart of God. So whatever that God wants for you, he will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Amen. Amen. Not just the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. The Holy Spirit now speaks to God regarding you. Amen. 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 That's, that's, how, that's how precious the Holy Spirit is to us. He's very, very important. He speaks to God about you. Imagine that. He even teaches us how to pray. Huh? He shows us how to pray. If he sees that, okay, this one is struggling, he keeps you quiet and he starts, he starts speaking on your behalf to God. How incredible is that? Wouldn't you want the Holy Spirit to be with you? Imagine going to God and saying, yo, yo, God, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> you can't, you know? Amen. Or you, you just, you come up to him, yeah, you God. Huh? Eh, eh. No. And as people that do that, you cannot speak to God like he's your friend or he's just some person, some guy or some girl or whatever. He is God. And the Holy Spirit himself knows how to speak to the Father. Amen. Amen. And he will speak on our behalf when he sees that we are struggling too. Amen. Amen. This is how he speaks to the Father. Sometimes we hear, it says in the word, it says that he speaks, he, he, he prays for us with utterances and groanings that are so deep. Hmm? There's a part where Jesus was praying after Lazarus uh, uh, died and they said he was groaning in his spirit. Hmm? He was groaning in his spirit. That was the Holy Spirit speaking on his behalf and we are talking about Jesus here and after that they said Jesus wept imagine that the very same spirit God has given, it, given that spirit to us he has given him to us he speaks in those utterances, those moments where I can't pray and I will groan literally groan before I did not understand what that was, until I read the word and I said, wow, wow. But even in that groaning, I knew that there's a speech, there's a conversation that is happening. It's just that my words cannot utter these words because it's too deep what I need to say to God. Amen. 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 And then the Lord also, he says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you the signs that you see that you have received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Those signs, some of the signs is speaking in tongues. Some of the signs is the revelation of the word. Some of the signs is the understanding of the very same tongues. There's different tongues. There's the tongues that when you speak to God, these are like the heavenly tongues. And there's the tongues where it's a different language. You can talk, we well, were talking the other day, you know, I was saying, I was speaking in Mandarin, in that's China, I don't know, and, and it just came out. Amen. But there are also tongues that you know that you are speaking to God. Amen. Amen. And the Lord says, Jesus, these tongues that you are given, it's not, these tongues, they're not for, they're not for the, the public. It's the language between you and God. If you are going to speak in other tongues, you need an interpreter. Somebody who's going to be able to interpret your tongues. But this is as simple as if I'm going to be talking Dasa Sotu and Brother Jablani is, is Zulu, then somebody else must come here so that he's able to hear what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. It's as simple as that. But there's the tongues that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's just something else. You connect with God on another level. You connect with God on a personal, personal level. Amen. When 
you know who I like there's no there's no you know sometimes you pray and then you are thinking I wonder who's listening to me hey let me not say this let me not say that this is why God says when you pray you must shut yourself in your own little corner and talk to me because when you pray like that you are you are praying to God in honesty amen, amen. The, 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 the tongues themselves they give you that advantage that you are able to talk to God in honesty. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us, he gives us the tongues, gives us the understanding, the spirit. These are the spirit that accompany the Holy Spirit. You know, this lady. It says the seven spirits of God. The seven spirits of God. These are the, the, the spirits that accompany the Holy Spirit. First, it says, it is, let me just read it. Let me, just, let me take you to where it is. Isaiah 11 from verse 3. It says, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. That's the first spirit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. And then, that's number one. And then he says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. That's number three. Wisdom is number two. Understanding, number three. And then he says the spirit of counsel, number four. And strength, number five. Then he says the spirit of knowledge, number six. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you see who comes with the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit is there, you have understanding. You have knowledge. Sometimes you know things that you yourself, you know, I've never seen this anywhere. I've never heard it from anywhere. I don't know how it is possible. I know this. You must know the Holy Spirit has arrived. Yes. Amen. Yes. That somebody will come, everybody where you are sitting, they don't understand something. And yet you, you are the only one that understands. Amen. Hmm? That is the spirit of understanding. Amen. When people are going through stuff and you come before them and you say, you know what, if you do this, the Lord is saying this, the Lord, that is the spirit of counsel. When you begin to counsel people that have no understanding of where to go or what to do, and you come in without even knowing what the deepness of that situation is. Because God would have given you what? The spirit of knowledge. You begin to know things that other people don't know. Amen. Amen. This is what, you know, well, the false prophets will say, okay, they are prophesying, you know, but that's divination because somebody else is giving them information. But there is also the spirit of knowledge where you just have knowledge about certain things. Sometimes you don't even know this, 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 this thing that I know actually belongs to you, Brother Chaplain, or to you, Daddy Jacob. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't, like you don't know, but you just have this knowledge of something. And you begin to say that, and whoever that it belongs to will say, oh my goodness, this belongs to me. Amen. Amen. The reason why God does that is because he needs to make sure that we do not take his glory. Amen. That's why I'm, when I show you, I show you like a broken glass. It's not everything that you will see. I'll give you bit by bit because I don't want you to ever think that you are God. Because if you ever think that, then that means you and Satan are one, one in the same WhatsApp group. Amen. You see what I mean? Because that's what Satan did. He thought he was God. He wanted to sit on his throne. You see? He wanted everything that he wanted to rule over us. How do you rule over us when we are made in his image and his likeness? Who must rule over us? It is the one who made us. Amen. Amen. So, and then there's the spirit of strength. Amen. Amen. When things are going so badly around you, oh, or, or wherever that you are with people and things and all of a sudden you have this level of strength and people are looking at you and they begin to admire that amen that's just incredible 
the strength that you have to go through to, 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 to surpass all understanding, you know, that is the spirit of strength. It's not the strength as in Samson's strength, but it is the strength in your abilities to do certain things, amen, or to go through certain things, amen. And then there's also the spirit of wisdom. We spoke about wisdom the other day, Dr. Jacob, when you were asking me the question. The spirit of wisdom. Wisdom, it is the ability to do. God gives you ways to do certain things. That is wisdom. And wisdom, if you look at wisdom, in, in, and, and I think I've mentioned this before, in uh, Proverbs, wisdom, they refer to wisdom as a sheep. You see, every time they talk about wisdom, they say, she said this and she said that, you know, which is quite interesting. I wonder the other ones, how do they refer them as, you know, may the Lord just reveal that, reveal, reveal that to us. Amen. So, but there is the spirit of wisdom and then there is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We need that. It's not the spirit of fear, but it's the spirit of the fear of God. Amen. We need to fear him so that hmm? we must never be complacent when it comes to God. We must never think what well, we know him that much that we can do whatever we want. We must never, not, not even in a million years, not even once, because he is God. Amen. Amen. Therefore, we must fear him. We must have the reverential fear of God. Amen. Amen. Because God can make a life and God can kill. God, when he doesn't want certain things, he doesn't want them. There is no other way you can try and negotiate sinning with God. Amen. Never. We must fear God. You know how we fear our fathers at home. And what's all? You know? If you remember from when we were young, Ubaba doesn't talk a lot. Ubaba is the one yapping, yeah, don't do this, yeah, don't do this. I'm gonna shop and yeah, yeah. You know? Ubaba sits there and watches all of this. And Ubaba says one word. Says, hey. And things they shut down. Why? There's a fear. There's a reverential fear of this man because you don't know what he can do to you. You don't know. He can do this, he can have mercy on you, or he can give you judgment. That's why we need to fear him. We must never think that we know him. They say, yeah, no, no grace, no, we all receive grace so I can go, God loves me the way I am. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that, that's a false, false, false gospel. If God loved us the way we are, why will then he require us to change, to be born again? Why would he require that? God does not love us the way we are. It pains him to see us the way we are because we, we, have, sinned, we have been sinning. This is why we require the blood of Christ to wash away our sins so that we are, we are presented presentable to the Father. Amen. Amen. God loves us. That's why he gave his only begotten son. God does not love what we do or how we are right now. He's not happy. He wants us to be okay. He wants us to be presentable properly before him. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because they say the Holy Spirit, he's a counselor to us. He will counsel us. Amen. The Holy Spirit will tell you, will, 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 will negotiate with God on your behalf. Hmm? That's the Holy Spirit. Will negotiate on your behalf. Amen. Amen. That, that's why it's saying that, that word is intercedes. He intercedes on our behalf. Amen. Amen. He's incredible. I just love him so much. You know, it took me a very long time to understand um how to relate to the holy spirit you know before i was like okay i know 
there is the Father, and there, you know, He is the Father, He's God, He's, you know, He's up there, He's, oh my God, He's incredible, you know? And then I know there's the Son, the Son, okay, because He says we are, we are heirs with Him. So to me, okay, so He's going to be like, He's like my brother, you know? He's like my big bro, you know? Um, even to a point where sometimes when I'm fighting with the enemy, I tell him, sometimes I don't even say, yay, hey, Jesus name. I just say, I will tell my brother Jesus, you know, that's my prayer. I literally will say something like that and say, I will tell my brother Jesus, hey, hey, mm -hmm. when I don't know. And I'll leave it like that. And things will just go quiet, you know, because I'm coming in now with my big brother. I know it's like when you when you when you are fighting at school or you are fighting somewhere else, you know, when we are younger and you say, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call my brother or my sister, they come there, you know. You see, that's how we look at Christ. That he comes, he sacrifices himself for you to come and fight for you. He fought for us. He fought for us, literally fought for us. In that fight that he was fighting, he bled. Blood was spilled. And he died. Because he was fighting for us. For our salvation. He was fighting. He was saying, not with these ones. And Satan was saying, no, 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 I did not with these ones. And he fought. He fought for us. He's our big brother. Amen. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, how do I relate to the Holy Spirit? How how do, do I relate to him as my best friend? Like how do I how do I how do I relate with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a natural. He's the one that he's a, I will not relate to him as my mother because he's a he. But he's a natural. Yes, that softness, that touch, you know, when it's almost like if you look at a father, if you ever have received a hug from your father, your own biological father, you'll understand that relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's different. Because now that hug, it's the heart of the father. When he, when he engulfs you and he holds you like this, that feeling that you feel, that is the heart of the Father. Amen. Amen. So when I look at the Spirit of God, I see him as the heart of the Father. So when he speaks to me, he's speaking to me, understanding the heart of the Father. When he, when I, when he speaks on my behalf, he is speaking on me on my behalf, understanding the heart of the Father. Therefore, when I speak to him, I'm speaking to the heart of the Father. Amen. Amen. Can you see that's why the, the word the, the, the Lord is saying to us in the Bible, He says to us, Don't grieve him. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, you are touching the heart of the Father. Amen. It's the only unforgivable, unforgivable, unforgivable sin. The only one that is mentioned in the Bible, this is an unforgivable sin. Amen. Amen. The heart of the Father. You cannot play with the heart of the Father. It's the same thing with us. We, we, all of us here, our heart has been broken before. It's a physical feeling. It's not even like, oh, my heart. No, no, it literally like you feel it, like you feel like it's broken into pieces. The heart. And when the heart is broken like that, your whole entire body cannot function. Can't function. So we cannot play around with the heart of God. Never. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the heart of God. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we are receiving the heart of God. This is when the word says, when I am in you and you are in me. When you receive the Holy Spirit, 
and is around you, go operates and gives you that hand. You are literally in God's heart. Right there in the middle, right there in the heart of God. Tell me when you are there, if you ask anything of the Father, he will never give it to you. Tell me when you are there, if you will ask anything outside of the heart of God. When you are inside the heart, there's no way. You will, you will ask what is inside the heart of God because you are there. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, Jehovah, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to quickly read the other scriptures that I've got here. Um, in Ezekiel 36, verse 27, it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. And you see, if the Lord puts the spirit, his spirit in you, there is no way you can walk you can walk outside of his will. Amen. Amen. Then you are, it's easy for you to observe the ordinances. Amen. 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 For John 3, verse 34, it says, For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. Okay? Speaking of Jesus. For he gives the spirit without measure. Amen. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, we have received, we receive, we can, we can receive the Holy Spirit without measure. Before, before the Bible would say, he gives, he gives as he wills. God gives as he wills. Amen. But God says as well, if you ask me, if you ask me of the Holy Spirit, I will give you. I won't give you little. I won't give you something else. I will give you what you are asking me, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, these are the different ways that I, I keep on looking at um, how the Holy Spirit, like, you know, he's, um, he's, he always manifests differently in different people, you know, and the word will say, um, the Holy Spirit fell on them, and then they began to speak in tongues, you know, and there was power, you know, and then uh, uh, with Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, it says the Holy Spirit descended on him, you see, amen. And, and like a dove, you know, most people say the Holy Spirit is like a dove, is in like, you know, a dove, dove. I don't believe it's that. I believe it's the graciousness of how a dove moves, like a dove, you know, how it moves. Have you seen, have you seen a bird as it lands? It doesn't go, you know, there's, 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 there's some level of graciousness that it, it, it descends at. Amen. Amen. And... And, and every time when you see where the Holy Spirit is, there's always power. He says power. Amen. Amen. So when we ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit, we must understand that he comes with power. And this power is not power that is of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of God. God is powerful. God is powerful. Amen. This is why a true man of God, a true servant of God, it is impossible for Elohim. Impossible. It's impossible. They will go back and go tell the person that they have, that they have been sent to you, not that one. We can't, we can't penetrate that one. It's impossible. You can't. They will try. But they can't. Look at, look at, look at the three Hebrew boys in the fire. Look at 
look at the three Hebrew boys. In the five, God can do that. What do you think a witch is to you when you have received the Holy Spirit? Number two, it's not just that. Now, when you have received the Holy Spirit, the power that you hold in your tongue is very dangerous. So there is so much responsibility that you hold in your hand because you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The other day, the man of God was saying to me, eh, 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 the spirit of a prophet, yes, is subject to the prophet. The spirit that you receive, it is how you use it. Amen. It is how you use it. It, is, it, 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 it depends on you. Amen. If you do not, if you, if you do not receive the Holy Spirit in a way you're supposed to receive, or if you are, if you are, if you are using the Holy Spirit in, you know, there's, there's those, those demonic prayers that guys, that, you know, that we used to do and we didn't even know that they were demonic prayers, you know, things like go back to the sender and things like that. That's a demonic prayer. Amen. Amen. Because God, what God wants, he wants all his people to be saved. That's, that's the first thing. I've once ministered and I said, I, nobody, there's nothing that anybody actually can do that deserves, that, that, will, that will make you feel that they deserve to go to hell when as a person. God will judge because he has standards. But us as people, there is nothing that a person can do to you, any trespass that the person can do to you, that will make you feel that they deserve to go to hell. You understand? Because hell it was never made for people. Amen. It was made for the enemy, for the devil. Therefore, what we need to do is have compassion the way God has compassion over us. God had mercy on us. Amen. So when we see people doing things, that's why the Lord says, love your enemy. Pray for those that curse you. He doesn't say to you, curse them back. Amen. Because he wants to save them. Because hell is hectic. It is so bad. It is so bad. It is, hell is, is evil at its fullness in, 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 like in eternity. Amen. No one deserves that. Nobody. So we cannot send people to hell. All we can do is minister unto them, pray for them, and ask God, Lord, find, please find another way to speak to this person. You know, let them be delivered somehow. I don't know. Do, do something. You know, what can I do? Or can we find people that are around this person to minister to this person so he can see? Hmm? Instead of saying, go back to send me. What you do is you nullify the thing that they sent to you. Amen. And you say, I do not receive this. Amen. That's the first thing. And then after that, then you pray for the person and say, Lord, forgive that person. Amen. Amen. And you say, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Amen. Jesus said those words as he was being spit upon. Mm -hmm. He was bleeding everything. He was completely naked. People were swearing at him. People were swearing at his own father and saying, where is he? You said, where? No, where? No, where? No, you are the son of God. So where? Where? Why, why don't you call your angels to come and help you? Look at you now. As they were saying that, Jesus said, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Do you know why they don't know? They don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus did. Jesus did. They didn't. So they knew not what they were doing. Had they had the Holy Spirit, then judgment would have come. Judgment would have come right there and there because 
they would have had the Holy Spirit. But they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had no understanding. They had no revelation. They had no fear of God. They had no, no wisdom. They had, they had all the things that come with the Holy Spirit. They had, they had none of that. They had no spirit of counsel. They had no spirit of the Lord. This is why they were doing what they were doing. And Jesus said, they don't know, Father. They don't know. Amen. And that's how we are supposed to be speaking to the people out there. Yes. Those that hurt us, he said, they don't know what they were doing. Amen. What can I do, Lord, on my end to introduce Jesus to them so that they know that they can ask of the Holy Spirit from you? Amen. Amen. It begins with Jesus. It begins with the understanding that he died for all of our sins, all of us. All of us. We were all once sinners. We were all once sinners. But we can never continue like that if we want to keep the Holy Spirit with us. We can't. Amen. Jesus says, sin no more. Sin no more. It's as clear as day. Clear as day. I don't care who else says what. It's as clear as day. Jesus said, sin no more. Therefore, once you have forgiven, you have received forgiveness, you have received the Holy Spirit, you have, you, you, you now begin to understand who Christ is and you start walking like him. Amen. Can you see? It goes hand in hand like this. You receive the Holy Spirit. You begin to understand the heart of God and why Jesus was doing the things that he was doing. How was it possible that he would walk on water? Huh? The spirit of counsel will tell him. Huh? Will tell him. Yes. But the power that you have, it supersedes the power of gravity. says that when he was brought to trial because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, as he stood up to speak to those who were trying, it says the, his appearance, his countenance changed. And when they continued to, to execute judgment on him, yeah. when they were stoning him, yes. he says forgive them, Lord, because they don't know what they are doing. Amen. So that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. It is true. Amen. Because Stephen had that revelation. Stephen had the spirit of counsel. Spirit, see Stephen had the, the seven spirits that we read about. This is why he had that revelation. And the very same spirit, Jesus himself says, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead Hallelujah. is the one Hallelujah. that is in us. Amen. Amen. It's a spirit that raises people from the dead. Jesus did not raise himself from the dead. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus gave up his spirit, his own spirit. But the spirit that raised him from the dead is the one that is in us. Amen. That also tells you something. You know, yesterday I was thinking about that. I was like, Lord, so Jesus gave up the spirit. Jesus gave up the spirit. He didn't wait for somebody to kill him. And, uh, you know, he gave up the spirit. Can you see the level of power that we have? You can literally give up your spirit. Literally. You say, okay, okay, I'm done. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody. Mm, you're gone. Without anyone touching me. That was a huge revelation for me. I was like, oh my God. Oh my word. This is, an, this is incredible. That's the level of power that I have. That if I want 
have to, I can give up my spirit. That's incredible. That is a huge, huge revelation. God is showing us that what I have given you, it is the power of God. The power of God is to give life and also you can take it. That's why he had to give us these instructions and say, thou shalt not kill. Because he knows we can. He knows we can. You see, he gives us all these instructions. He say, don't do this. Please don't do this. I've given you too much power, but just these are the rules. With the power that I've given you, these are the rules. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So in Galatians uh, 3, verse 27 says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Amen. Christ is an anointing, man. Eh? Christ is not written, it's not Jesus' symbol. It's an anointing. Okay? It is the power of God. The anointing is the power of God. Christ is the anointing of God. Amen. So, and then he said, it says in John 20, verse 22, it says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to read all these. And then in Romans 8, verse 26, it says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Amen. Amen. And then Luke 11, 13 says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That's the verse that I was talking about, where he says, you will ask your father for, for bread. He will not give you a stone. If you ask your father for meat, he will not give you a, a snake. Amen. But he, he, us being evil, being, you know, without the Holy Spirit, being evil, if when my children ask me for something, I give them what they are asking for. Now imagine if we are asking God for the Holy Spirit. He will definitely give the Holy Spirit to us. Amen. 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 And go John 14 from verse 16 to 17 says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. This is Jesus. Can you see? Jesus is so gracious that he is going to ask the Father. The reason why we have the Holy Spirit is because Jesus asked <laughs> on our behalf. <laughs> Not because we asked, because we didn't know. We didn't even know that we should be asking for the Holy Spirit. We didn't know. Jesus had to ask the Father to send his heart to us. This is why when Jesus says, you can never come to my Father except through me. Do you think that without Christ, heaven had to ask for the Holy Spirit if we didn't even know who the Holy Spirit is? And then we go to the Father and say, please can you give me the Holy Spirit? No, I don't have heaven. Do you even know what you have there? Do you understand? Do you understand that if I give you the Holy Spirit or what you have in your hand? You can't just come to me and ask me for things that you don't know. Jesus had to teach us. We had to see it in how he walked, in how he behaved, in the power that he held, and say, yo, how is he doing all of these things? Not because he was the son of, the son of God. He was man, but the Holy Spirit was with him. God was showing us. It was a showing shortly. There is a showing shortly. It was a trailer to say, this is what you could have. And this is how you're supposed to use you know, the things of God. This is how you're supposed to walk in 
the things of God. This is how you're supposed to speak to the Father. This is how you're supposed to speak to your pure to your peers. This is how you're supposed to teach them the things of God. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. That's why Jesus came. Amen. And then he says, I know all of these things because the Holy Spirit is with me. Amen. Amen. You must remember that Jesus was a child. He grew in this world. He had to take off all his kingly, kingship, kingly garments and everything that he knew. We, this is the thing that we need to understand. That they say he had to learn obedience by the things that he suffered. Amen. This is Jesus. So we can never look at Jesus and say, I ah, know he's just, that's why he, he was able to do the things that he did because he's God, because he's the son of God. No, no, no. God stripped him of all the power. He said, go there, go show them that this can be done. And he did. Amen. Amen. He himself had to be taught obedience. <laughs> Jesus had to be taught obedience by the things he suffered. Amen. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit to be able to navigate this world, this world and this earth. Amen. This is why God, when he was baptized, when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him and God said, this is my son. Amen. Amen. And he says, listen to him. Why? After the Holy Spirit descended on him, he says, listen to him. Why are we supposed to listen to Jesus? Because he has the Holy Spirit. He has the heart of God. This is why he said, I can only, I only say what I hear my father say. And I only do what I see my father do. It's because he had the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And then in Ephesians uh, 1 verse 13, he says, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit was promised to us. It was promised to the disciples. When God, when Jesus said to the disciples, Go tell ye in Jerusalem wait for the promise Amen. wait for the promise who is the promise it's the holy spirit so the very this very same thing that was promised to them was promised to us too amen and this promise is the one that seals us it's like a signet ring it seals us in christ Amen. Amen. When Christ says, when I am in you and you are in me, you can ask the Father anything and you can do it. Amen. Amen. It seals, the Holy Spirit seals us in Christ himself. So we become one with him. That when we go to the Father, the Father sees his Son because we behave like him, because we speak like him, because we sound like him, because we look like him. By the time we go to the Father, we go in that because we, we are covered. You see, we are covered in the name itself, in the nature of Christ. Amen. We are covered. I'm not talking about the blood of Christ. I'm talking about him himself. When we say, in the name of Jesus, we are now talking about, you, not, you are not, you are not, you are, we are not referring, you are inside that name. You are covered by this name. Amen. It is the nature of the Son. You are covered in the nature of the Son. Amen. Therefore, when you come before God, you speak like his Son. You sound like his son. You smell like his son. Amen. Amen. And this is why the Father will say yes. Amen. Amen. Yo, and the one who seals us in vain is the Holy 
Holy Spirit. It's the heart of God. The heart of God is the one that puts the signet ring on that. Puts the signet ring to seal us in. This is why the Lord says, if I am in you, and if you are in me and I am in you, it is impossible to sin. Because you are sealed in there. There's no way out. You can't come out. And sin cannot come in, cannot knock and open by force and come in. It's coming into the presence of God. Sin cannot come in the presence of God. The only way you can sin is when you move out of the presence Alleluia. of God. Alleluia. Amen. That's why the Lord says it is impossible for you to sin when you are in me. Amen. This clear as that. As simple as that. Amen. We bless God. Because he says, I'll give you I'll, I'll the spirit of truth or the comfort of good and lead you what to all. So I'm trying to, so if, 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 am I praying? What do I pray? Who do I pray to, you know? Because the word of God says, obviously the Holy Spirit will help me. Mm -hmm. But I think, maybe, you could just. Yes. But you know, I, I, I hope exactly I'm, your question, you know, I hear your question you hear very me. well. Thank yes. you so much. Um, where we fault is thinking that we are meant to be praying to the Holy Spirit or we are meant to be praying to Jesus. We are meant to be praying to the Father through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you pray to the Father. Everything comes from the Father. Amen. This is why I mentioned that Jesus said, I can I, I only say what I hear my Father say. The Holy Spirit cannot move outside of what he hears from the Father. Even the Bible says that. Therefore, we do, when we pray, we don't pray to Jesus. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Father in the nature of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is the one that will counsel us and say, say this, say that. You see, so when he says to us, say this, say that, as he's saying that, Tina, we start becoming in the nature of Christ as we come before God and we say to the Father, Father, may I have this. Amen. That is where, and most of us, most of the Christians, they don't know that. And this can only be revealed by the Father. Amen. Amen. We never ever pray to the Holy Spirit. We pray with the Holy Spirit. That's why he says he will intercede for you. When he says, oh, he doesn't know, he says, keep quiet, I will speak. You see what I mean? He will give you wisdom. He will give you understanding of the things of God. By him, we begin to understand the Father. And we begin to understand the Son. Amen. Amen. With Christ, we enter into his nature. This is why God made him to be like us here on earth and said, go and show them how we're supposed to do this thing. Amen. Amen. How they're supposed to come and pray to me. When the disciples said to, 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 to Jesus, they asked him, how do we pray? Teach us how to pray. He didn't say, say me. He said, through me, you can never come to the Father 
unless you come through me by the Holy Spirit through me by the Holy Spirit but when you pray to the Father you say Abba Father our Father Amen. Amen you say our Father so now right the first line is telling you already who do you pray to to the Father and then he says me and the Father are one Amen. Amen. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in John 17, he says, eh, eh, Father, as I am one with you, may they be one with me. Are you seeing that? It's so clear. He says, make them one with me, the way I am one with you. He doesn't say make them one with you. He says, they must be one with me so that they understand how to come before you. Because when Jesus would come before God, he needed the Holy Spirit. He needed the Holy Spirit. This is why God gave him the Holy Spirit, which is his heart. The Holy Spirit is essentially the will of God. When you come before God, you must come before God in his will. And his will is the Holy Spirit. The person that shows us his will is Christ. Amen. Amen. The person that shows us how we navigate is Christ. He's shown us that. But he was never going to be able to do it while he was on this earth without the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Is that okay? <laughs> Amen. Yes, man of God. Any question? Thank you, Michael Buta. Why, like, a our God, and the Holy Spirit, do not have any time to be with us to the or what I am doing. And what we do not have a rapper and any time the mysteries of God. That's a perfect, that's an incredible question. Thank you for asking that. Oh my God, yes. The reason for that okay, is because the tongues that it's not supposed to be the way it is right now what 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 the Christians are doing now that's not tongues that's something else I don't know what that thing, that thing is okay but when you speak in tongues you do prophesy the last time when I said when I when I was speaking uh, you know when we were, uh, you know just here we were talking and I said to you when I speak in tongues, I understand what I am saying because I see it. Amen? I understand what I'm saying because I see it. That's how you prophesy. Amen? That's how you prophesy. Prophecy is what God shows you. You, be just, becomes, you just become a mouthpiece. Then you're a prophet. Then you become a mouthpiece of what God is saying. Amen. amen. So when you begin to speak in tongues, amen, amen. you are supposed to see. Okay. You are supposed to understand what you are saying. When? Okay. Even in the groanings, even though you don't know the exact thing that you are saying, in the groanings, you will know what your spirit is crying about. Amen. amen. You will know. Because God has put you in a position now where you are able to communicate with him on a, on a higher level. Amen. Amen. So if God puts you in that position, it is only fair for him to be able to reveal to you what it is that you are saying. Amen. 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 It's only fair. God is not unfair. So when people are speaking in tongues, that thing that, thing that they do, and most of the time they do like it's almost the same type of tongues, you know. And you ask yourself, what is this? What are you saying? Are you saying the same thing to God? 
like what language is this? Like, I'm, I'm, what is this? What, what are you saying? You know? To me, what that is, it's chanting. Those are not tongues. It's chanting. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. That, that literally just came from God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is called chanting. It is not tongues. I will tell you now, when you begin to speak in tongues, you will hear yourself. It sounds like a language. It does. The, the dialect sound you never saw, you know? Like I used to be surprised, I keep going to and then I enter into tongues. And then like in the middle of the day, I go like, mm, you know? Like, like you don't know, no more way how you are. Okay, you know? I'll say that, like, mm, mm. <laughs> you know, like I, I speak like that to show you it's an actual language between you and God. Amen. It's not a what is that? What are you saying? Who are you talking to? Exactly. It's because people are being taught tongues. You can't teach people tongues. You cannot. It is the Holy Spirit who will give you those utterances. Not men. Not men. When you begin to enter into tongues, you will also see that when you begin to enter into tongues, did you see, when I was praying here, I was praying with the microphone. I was speaking properly. I was praying to the Lord that everybody was here. And I began to enter into tongues and I moved the microphone because this has nothing to do with any of you. It has everything to do with me and God. Amen. Amen. And I begin to speak to the Father. I'm not screaming. I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm talking to the Father. Amen. And then after that, I come back and I continue because we are praying together. Amen. Amen. And that is how it's meant to be. That is how it's meant to be. Unless you guys are together and there is no one amongst you that does not understand the, the whole concept of the tongues. Amen. amen. If you are together and you are praying in one accord, amen, amen, and you enter into tongues, usually you will see when one person begins to enter into tongues, the others start entering into tongues and then the Lord starts speaking. This is why when we pray for the fivefold, after we pray and the woman of God will say, did anyone see anything? Is there anyone that would like to say something? That is the correct way of doing it. Because we cannot just pray in tongues and not see anything. But when they prayed in tongues, and then the spirit of prophecy also came. The spirit of prophecy is the word of God himself. He begins to speak. That's why all the prophets in the Old Testament, they will say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. They say that. Not I say this. Not the spirit said, no, the angels said, no, no, no. But thus saith the Lord. So when you enter into tongues, your spirit must be open to hear what God is saying. Amen. Amen. That is how it is done. Everything else that you're seeing out there are shedding. Our children do those are chants. And uh, we need, we, that's why we need to teach. Okay. We need to teach the people of God. You know, it is very, it's a scary thing to do, servants of God. It's not easy for me to sit here and start saying, no, that's not. It's not. And neither was it easy even for the, for the prophets of God back in the day when everybody was doing the same thing. And they alone would stand up and say, what you are doing is not correct. And they say, well, where do you come from? How do you know? Who are you? You know? Which God is talking to you that is not talking to us? It's because we are not listening. We are listening to men. We are not listening to God. Amen. Amen. That is the problem. You know, there was a, a I'll give you another example. For instance, um, would, would uh, enter into, what they call it a, Intercession. <laughs> yeah, they call it intercession. Okay. Unadidi um prayer points. Okay. And these prayer points are hectic prayer points. You know, it's the yeah, you know, 
cancel the spirit of what what upon you. Now, ma'am, ye what 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 all of those things, eh? And they will give you the prayer points. When they give you the prayer points, it fully enters into the chance. Okay? And I remember the one time, uh, and I could hear, like, sometimes the Lord will allow me to actually hear tongues, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, you know? And, or sometimes the Lord will allow me to hear other people's prayers, you know? Even I'm, I'm at home, and I'm like, oh my God. Some like, The other day, somebody was praying for me. I was like, oh my God, oh, this is so sweet. Like literally hearing everything that they're saying, you know. But God will do that to those that He already trusts, you know. But that is also a big responsibility for me, you know. And I'm like, oh Lord, give me something like this, and then, and, and, you know, I don't want to make mistakes. This is why the fear of the Lord is important. You see what I mean? Anyway, let's go back to the the yeah the chant. They will start chanting, chanting, chanting. I will enter into the prayer. Get about to pray for this. As I enter, I see this warfare. I see this warfare. And I say, Lord, what do I do? The Lord will tell me what to do. Do you know that God gives us weapons in the spirit? Actual weapons. There's weapons. I've got like a whole lot of weapons that I can mention to you. I've got this and I've got this. And the Lord will tell me, do this with this. Amen. As I enter, I see the warfare and I start praying. I say, Lord, what do I do? I keep quiet and the Lord will tell me and I'll say things and you'll see me doing things even with my hands. You know, I'm in, I'm in warfare. Bye. And then while I'm doing that, in that warfare, the prayer point changes to show you that these people, they don't understand what they've just done. They raised a warfare. They did a war cry. And the enemy stood up and said, come, let's fight. And then they chant, helping the enemy. And then they go into the next prayer point. Now I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God. I can't stop praying because now I'm in a warfare by myself. I'm like, uh... And I said, Lord, please, I want to enter into this. I can't do this whole thing that they are doing. People must have an understanding of what they are doing. When you enter into warfare, you enter into warfare and you finish that fight. Mm -hmm. You finish it. You finish everything, every single one of them. They must be gone. Not they are dead, they dead or they, these are these are spirits that are already dead. They have no they have no life. How do you destroy something that has no life? Can you see that you need God? There's no way. There's no prayer that I can make me when I give you one. No prayer that I can make by myself to destroy these things. None. None. This is why even when you are sleeping and you're trying to say Jesus and you have it to the start. Yeah, it goes, the voice is going, you are running, you are running slow, but you're trying to run fast. What is that? You try to call Jesus, there's no sound. Why? What is it that, why, why are you failing there? And you think you can enter into a proper warfare? People that enter into warfare, God calls them into warfare. Not just enter. God calls you into that warfare. But before he calls you into that warfare, he gives you all the weapons that you need. Amen. Amen. It's a fact, servants of God, it's a fact. I don't even want to lie. It's a fact. It's a fact. I would pray. I would pray. Now I'm just praying about something else. And then I will see. What, ning, ning, I'm praying. I'm praying. As I'm praying, I'm, I'm doing this. I can feel my hand is heavy. You know? And I said, Lord, what is this? You see, I'm, I'm talking to God. When I'm praying, I'm not telling God what I want this and I want that. I'm communicating with the Lord. Amen. So I'm like, what is this, Lord? You know? And he says, it's a javelin. I'm like, a javelin? Oh, okay. What do I do with it? You see? I'm negotiating with God. I'm talking to him. You know? And he keeps quiet. 
And then I go back into the Bible and I research and I research where was the javelin, who was using the javelin. Why did God give me a javelin? Why would I even think about a javelin in the first place? I'm in my high heels and I'm thinking about a javelin. Why? You know what I mean? I've never even played that sport ever. No one thinks about javelin guys like nobody except for the people that play javelin. Like me, you know? And I'm holding a javelin. Like, what is this for, Lord? You know? And he keeps quiet. The day he showed me what to do, how to use that javelin, it was unbelievable. He said, stand. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm in warfare. They're coming. <laughs> yes, I was so funny. Yeah, yeah, the things that I've seen, you don't understand. They are coming in multitudes of alone in my kitchen. These things are there. Uh, sure. Coming like this. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? I just stand. The Lord says, stand. I stood. But I get to feel it. I'm like, ah. Say, so stand. And right there in the middle of all this, these, these things, these things are so many like ants, but they were big and they're like spirits. Like they, 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 it was just, it was just scary. In the middle of that, there was this thing. It looked at, it looked like a, it looked like a, like an elephant. Ne? It, it had like this nose. Ne? It, that, it, but like it wasn't, it wasn't like a nice elephant that you see at the zoo and people buy him. No, no, like this was something scary. I did not know what the thing was, but it just had this long nose, ne? and it was it was almost like they were carrying it, like it was almost like hovering, you know. And you were walking on a horse, eh? you know. And the Lord says, "Stand!" And these things are coming with war cries, going, "Ah! I'm in my kitchen <laughs> in the middle of the day." <laughs> In the middle of the day, my children are outside playing. I'm alone in the kitchen. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? I stand and I stood. They were coming. They came closer and closer and closer. And he says, throw it. And I went, wow. I don't know the level of power. That thing is heavy. Javelins are heavy, guys. I'm a woman with nails. <laughs> I held that thing and I knew the position to stand and I threw this thing and it went straight. It went into the nose and went like literally here. That thing fell on the floor. These things, as it falls, they were dissipating like it was sand. It was, it was a, a dust. God was saying, don't worry about these ones. The target is that one. The target is that one. But not all warfares are like that. They're different. I find you kind of God. Yes. How do you do you know this is very, very important? Especially for us How do you do that? How do you do um like how did you get access that it's because it's a grace, you know? Like it's a grace that is called the Holy Land. Because you seem to be, you be very relating with your God, you know, with your Father so nicely, and you talk to him, be, he's actually, it's, 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 um, I, I, you know, it's like when, to me, when God speaks to me, it's, it's like every time you say it, you know, it's like, it's like he doesn't really talk to me, like, okay, it's like, he, 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 he says things, and, like, so, what, 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 there was a time you asked me, I was saying, I'm, I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm not going to, you know, I told you this story. Yeah. I, 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 I want to 
no es mi hermano es mi hermano ¿cuál fue? le dice esto what like why do you put gender to this man of course why do you think it's a, it's a man as mm-hmm. in male mm-hmm. why do you stereotype you say that like, like you know it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. so that grace how did you manage to go and write around that grace you know it's mm-hmm. you're just you are you are we well, you know that we are in Ofe and uh, you're you are okay with it and you are like doing your expressions and you are doing whatever that you do but you know everything is in order. It, it's a grace and I, I, I would like we, maybe most of us here you know, most people would like to know how, how, how it's a grace. I, I know I don't have that grace but I know I see God in prayer. Receive it. Mm-hmm. Lord is saying receive it. Tell you how to use those weapons. 